the Fourth Republic and the cycle of elections and post-election litigations. Where does it start or stop? Some state governors wait for outcomes to affirm or reject the processes that brought them in. In other issues, former head of state General Yakubu Gowan says peace and unity are the only stools on which the nation can sit comfortably. Also on political update today, PDP sweeps council polls in Taraba as party's NWC promises to resolve all grievances. Plus, NNPP, the party and its immediate priorities. These and more on our lineup. I'm Fisai Ogunfui. Welcome. The peace and unity of Nigeria and its people, peace advocates say, can only endure on the tripod of social cohesion, political inclusivity and partnership. Nigeria's friends, partners and former head of state, General Yakubu Gowans, gave the views during the leadership series on Africa. At a time when peace and tranquility seem to be evading several regions currently plagued by war, the imperative of equality, nationalism, social justice and sincerity of purpose would provide valuable lessons for African leaders. Bringing in a man who was and still is a fierce defender of Nigeria's peace and unity is deemed a right call by the Institute of Peace and Conflict Resolution and Tel Africa as they discuss leadership and the imperative of peace and unity across the continent. Government policies and leaders in Africa, you know, must consciously, you know, and deliberately, you know, implement policies that are inclusive, that makes for elite consensus, that looks for positive political settlements, you know, and, and that is the only way we can build our nations and build the nations of Africa. Former head of state, General Yakub Gawon, while sharing his experience and key decisions taken by his government to forestall peace, reconciliation, rehabilitation, reconstruction as well as reintegration of Nigerians after the war said respect being each other's keeper and bridging the gap between the half and half not are ideals for peace. Please, please, please. All of you believe in Nigeria and help to, to make it better, to make it good and better. To make it work. For NTA there is no alternative for peace and national cohesion. We also represent peace and the national integration of Nigeria, which we do not take for granted, because our mandate is to ensure that the national interest is not compromised. To post-election litigations now, the Court of Appeal at Abuja Division has dismissed the appeal of governorship candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Titus Suba, challenging the election of Reverend Father Isentalia of the APC as governor of Benue State. The three-man panel of justices in a unanimous verdict resolved all the three issues formulated in the appeal for the determination of the appellant. Justice Onyekachi Ajao Tisi, who delivered the lead judgment, dismissed the allegations of non qualifications made by the appellants against the Deputy Governor Samuel Ode. The court held that the appellants failed to establish forgery of INEC Form EC 9 by Ode beyond reasonable doubt as required by law. Justice Otisi held that the appeal of Uba against the judgment of Benue State Governorship Election Petition Tribunal delivered on September 23rd lacked merit and was dismissed. The appellate court subsequently upheld the judgment of the tribunal which upheld the election of Hyacinth Alia as the duly elected governor of Benue State. Well, over the weekend, the Court of Appeals sitting in Abuja nullified the election of Governor Caleb Mutwang of uh, Plato State. The three-man panel of justices in a unanimous decision held that Mutwang was not validly sponsored by the People's Democratic Party. The three-member panel of justices in a unanimous decision held that Mutwang was not validly sponsored by the People's Democratic Party, PDP, as provided by the Constitution. The court held that the appeal of Nentawe Koshwen of the All Progressives Congress APC succeeds as the issue of qualification was both a pre- and post-election matter. 
the panel agreed with the appellant that the failure of the PDP to comply with the order of the High Court of Plateau State sitting in Jos directed it to conduct valid ward local governments and state congresses before nominating its candidates for the various elective posts was a breach of the law. In the light of this, the panel set aside the judgment of the Plateau State Governorship Election Petitions Tribunal for being highly inconsistent and breach of fair hearing by relying on expunged witnesses' statements to refuse Goshwen's petition. The panel ordered the Independent National Electoral Commission to withdraw the certificate of return issued to move forward. Meanwhile, the National Working Committee of the New Nigeria People's Party, NMPP, has rejected the judgment of the appeal court, uh, which upheld the verdict of the Kano State Election Petition Tribunal that uh, Governor Abba Kabir Yusuf of Kano State was not a registered member of the party when the governorship election was held. We pray that the judiciary will live up to its, its calling as the temple of justice and the last half of the common man. So far, members of NNPP nationwide and the people of Kano State are yet to get justice from the judiciary. In the last election, the last election, I next used what you call Potter to submit the names of your candidates. And the portal is so configured that by the time you are submitting the name of your candidate, you must submit his forms that he obtained as an aspirant. Yes. You must submit his expression of interest form. Apart from that, you must submit his membership card with his membership number, together with all the other particulars. If any of this document is missing, the porter will not accept the candidate that you have submitted or you have submitted the document. And joining us live on Political Update is, my, is Mr. Dick Bolayoku, National Secretary of the New Nigeria People's Party, NMPP. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank you very much, Sir. Uh, all, all right, your party is kicking against the appeal court judgment, but some people and some lawyers have said that you may have uh, perhaps uh, been a little bit lethargic uh, in the handling of your case, as, especially during the tribunal. Is that true? No, that is very far from the truth because uh, there is no document required or even requested for that the party did not provide during the time of the trial at the, at the tribunal. That's why it came to us as a surprise when the tribunal hinged its decision on the issue of membership and then the, the invalid ballot papers. And interestingly, when the matter got to the appeal court, the appeal court was silent on the issue of uh, invalid ballot papers, but uh, hinged his decision on the membership issue. Apart from the legal issue of membership, whether somebody from outside can come and inquire into the membership of a person in that party that had been settled in different courts, at the different courts, Supreme, even Court of Appeal, Supreme Court. But let us use, look at the issue of membership critically. As the National Secretary of NNPP, I am the custodian of all the documents that has to do with membership and everything pertaining to the party. You know, in February last year, INEC uh, released what they call the guideline for the 2023 election. They released it exactly a year before the election, in line with the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, that has amended. And there are some programs that were put into this guideline culminating in the election of February 25, 2023. And part of the programs or pro events outline or put into this program has to do with the emergence of a candidate of a political party. And the process began with what they call the primaries. And like in our own case, we did our primaries sometimes in June, but the process commenced in May when we did the screening of our aspirants because then we had more than one aspirant from so many of the states. And the current governor of Kano State, Engineer Abba Kabir Yusuf, was an aspirant that came for our screening in May 
because you have to go through screening to be to ensure to make sure that you are qualified to go into the primaries. And one of probably the requirements for the screening is that you must come apart from the nomination form, apart from the expression of interest form, you must come with your membership card that bears the signature of your ward chairman because you must have registered at the ward level. The same thing happened in the case of uh, Abba Gida Gida, as they, they call him in, uh, in Kano. He presented himself before the screening committee and brought all these documents, which make the screening committee to ask, okay, you can go for the primaries. And we did our primaries on the 6th of June. I neck as a matter of necessity, because Section 82 of the Electoral Act is very clear. If I neck does not cover your primaries, it's like you're doing a normal, normal party. So they were there, they covered, they monitored everything where they did the primaries and Abagida emerged as a candidate of NNPP in that June. Furthermore, after that, according to INEC, he that to before last election, what, the normal, what we were doing was to go to INEC with all the documents, they call hard copy, to go and submit nomination of our candidates. But in the last election, INEC came up with an idea because they want to decide city of his stuff that instead of bringing those materials to our office, they created a portal where you will log in every document about your candidate. And the portal, like I said, is configured in such a way that when you are submitting the nomination of your, candidate, of your party, especially for candidate state, apart from submitting particular stuff about the, about the nomination forms, about the expression of interest form, one critical aspect of it is the membership card which you must also submit along with all those documents. And like I said, if any of this court document is missing, the portal will not accept the candidature of that person. This was done. Before INEC now came up with their preliminary list of candidates that have succeeded in imagine as candidates. After that, if there are no objections, INEC now came up with what they call the final list of candidates. The current governor of Kano State went through all these processes and procedures. And somebody is now coming to tell let, us let, that this let, man let, let is a party. Let me jump in, you know, there. While noting the precedents that you have cited in the Supreme Court verdict, which uh, posited that the membership and leadership of a political party was an internal affair, I understand that. But tell us, uh, truly, apart from the fact that, uh, you know, you have mentioned membership card, there's also a duration between when you join and when you can aspire to some of these positions. Was the governor on your books before the elections, or did you give him a waiver? Yes, that is just it. At least I do. I think many of the political parties have it, but in our own party constitution, which has been registered with INEC, and they have as one of the documents because one of these things you must submit to INEC, the manifesto, the constitution must be submitted with INEC. There's a provision for waiver. What the waiver says is that normally it's expected that you must have spent a year in a party before you can aspire to any political office. But there's a provision in our constitution that says the National Working Committee can grant a waiver if somebody applies. And I'm very happy to inform you that Abba Gida Gida applied for the waiver and NWC sat over it along with side other people, that other people that applied, he was granted that waiver with a letter because he applied in writing and we was, the waiver was granted to him with a letter saying that in view of the sections and after looking at uh, your application, the NWC has approved, that is the tone of the letter, a waiver be granted to you with that. The issue of one year membership has been erased. So he has the letter because he applied, and then obviously he gave him the letter, which was signed by the national chairman and national secretary. And the letters are with him today. So the issue of waiver he is covered because the provision for it in the condition which NNPP obliged him after he has applied. He applied. All right, you, have, you, you have another chance in the next uh, few weeks. Uh, uh, we see that uh, perhaps uh, this will be succinctly put and uh, wish you the best. But of course, you still uh, stay on. We'll take a few stories. We'll come back to you uh, for issues on your party as well. Uh, moving on now, um, an election observer group, Coalition for Democracy and uh, Development in Africa, has presented its report on the November 11, 2023 off-cycle governorship elections in Bayasa, Imu, and Kogi states. Uh, the group's uh, Executive Director uh, Thomas Uza uh, also commended the security agencies who deployed their personnel for the exercise. The Coalition for Democracy and Development in Africa, after extensive scrut uh, scrutiny of the reports of election observers, concludes that the Nigerian military and other security agencies provided adequate security before, during, and after the elections. 
The military was professional in their conduct, which was commendable. The conduct of the security agencies indicated a commitment to preserving democracy in Nigeria. The defense headquarters also the defense headquarters was also commended in its supervision of the election operations. There were clear court communication channels that improved response time to security threats in the states. The chief of defense staff and other heads of security agencies are commended for defending democracy through their actions and inactions that led to the peaceful elections in Kogi, Imo, and Bayesa states. The hierarchy of the security agencies deploys similar strategies in tackling insecurity in the country. Let's look at a state election. The Taraba State Independent Electoral Commission has announced that the PDP won all the 16 seats in the just concluded local government election in the state. The local government council election in Taraba State was contested among six political parties, namely Action Alliance, AA, All Progressives Grand Alliance, APGA, All Progressives Congress, APC, New Nigeria People's Party, NNPP, People's Democratic Party, PDP, and Social Democratic Party, SDP. SIEC Chairman Dr. Philip Due said, the conduct and announcement of results for the elected chairman and councillors was done in line with the electoral guidelines of the commission. The guidelines stipulate that results for the chairmanship election be announced at the local government collection centers, while councillorship results should be announced at the ward collection centers. Dr. Due gave a breakdown of what each of the six participating political parties called in the 16 local government areas after which he announced the winners. PDP, 116,291 votes. In this consideration, PDP has the highest vote of 116,000 291 votes and stands elected in the chairmanship election. CIEC chairman said Taraba state electoral law makes provision for aggrieved candidates or political parties to approach the local government election petition tribunal constituted in the state for redress. The presentation of certificates of return to the elected chairman and councillors would be done in due course. Meanwhile, the National Working Committee of the People's Democratic Party says it will do all it can to keep the party as one indivisible body going forward. The acting national chairman, Ambassador Umar Damagun, stated this after the committee's meeting in Abuja. Unity, election review, and how to move the PDP forward dominated the meeting agenda. Acting National Chairman Umar Damagum enjoined all aggrieved members of the PDP in the recent elections to pursue redress within the ambit of the law. We should reflect, all members should reflect and reminiscence with the roles everyone played during campaigns, during elections and after. Meanwhile, the People's Democratic Party pressure group under the banner of the PDP Forever Initiative at the national headquarters of the party has called on the Undo State Governor, Rotimi Akeredolu, to resume office or transmit power to his deputy, Loki Ayedatiwa, in accordance with the 1999 constitution as amended. The national coordinator of the group, Gideon Obande, emphasized that since the governor has been out of office for some time, it is incumbent on him to transmit power to his deputy. As soon as you man the office of the governor or deputy governor, it is no longer a party affair. It is now a people affair. The group enjoined the people of Undo State to remain law-abiding. And the chairman who won the Taraba State uh, Chairmanship elections, uh, the 16 uh, Winners have been sworn in on Monday, that is uh, yesterday, the uh, 20th of November. Uh, let's uh, move on very quickly. We, will, we still have with us the National Secretary of the New Nigeria People's Party. Now, while you are trying to uh, 
do some firefighting uh, for issues uh, perhaps not directly in control, under your control in the party. You have to fight some fires uh, internally as well with uh, uh, some state chairmen suspended and uh, new ones, uh, acting ones, uh, uh, you know, already announced. Uh, that process has been on now and of course you have done that. Uh, what is the state, uh, the state of play right now in the party? Yeah, the, the party is moving on because, uh, like uh, the former national chairman of the front and the NPN said, late uh, Chief Augustus Atisa Akinloye, that uh, a good politician commences preparation for another election immediately after one election. Yeah, after the 2023 election, we did an introspect and then we discovered that uh, some of our members uh, were engaged in anti party activities which caused the party. Uh, the, the election. So then we did some introspect. Committees were set up to do, discipline them. Then they were disciplined according to the condition of the party. Like you rightly observe, acting chairman have been appointed for the states because we are trying to put the position the party for 2027. That was why immediately after the election of 2023, just by the fact that we have good ground to go to the tribunal because uh, our manifest, our logo rather, was badly represented in the ballot papers across the country. And, uh, but we look at the state of the country then so that uh, we don't add to the temperature of the country. We said, no, we're not going to the tribunal because the winner has been merged. And then we started to reposition the party, and that's exactly what we are doing. We, we are a lawful, lawful, um, peaceful society, association or party. We believe so much in peace, and that is why anything that will truncate the peace of the state, we don't engage in it. Even now that uh, we are having issues at the Court of Appeal, the Court of Appeal gave its ruling on Friday, 17th of November, as at, 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 at 10 o'clock today before I left the office. We were still struggling to get the certified, certified true copy of the judgment who will enable our legal team to prepare their papers for Supreme Court. And we, see, we saw a similar thing immediately after the Court of uh, Tribunal judgment. When we, we were preparing to appeal, and all of a sudden from nowhere came a report that I neck who was also a part of the case, had withdrawn from the appeal. That was meant to create confusion and controversy. Eventually, it was discovered that it was one official of uh, INEC in Kano State who said some people might have pressure on him to withdraw a case without the knowledge of the INEC headquarters. Uh, we thank God INEC quickly intervened and the matter was put to arrest. But it created a lot of confusion. That's exactly what is happening now. We, five days after the judgment was read on November 17th, we are yet to lay our hands on the CTC, which will have helped our legal team to prepare their defense, their, their permanent issue at the Supreme Court. So we are also using this opportunity to call on the judiciary not to meet out justice, but at least justice must be seen to have been done. So we are calling on them, let them release this thing to us in time so that our lawyer, our legal team, can prepare our papers to go to the Supreme Court, which is very, very necessary. Mm -hmm. We have so much confidence in the judiciary. That is why any time we suffer any problem, we will quickly run to, run to the judiciary. Even during the last election, when a sitting member of the House of Representatives allegedly left some people to our research that burned down the place about and burned down about 13 people, we didn't resort to violence. We only called on our people to remain calm because we believe that we don't have another country apart from this country. We don't do we engage in anything that will create chaos or confusion. That's why we are appealing to the judiciary. Mr. Dipola, I think you, are, you have made us. your point because time is not on our, our, our friend. We made sure that we got you in, uh, you know, to uh, give you a level playing field as well as, uh, you know, uh, we always do. Uh, thank you for, you know, coming on the show. We will uh, keep this space open and see that, uh, uh, you know, see what happens uh, at the end of uh, this uh, uh, tunnel, a labyrinth in our poli political scene. It's and I will see how you, you know, navigate through. It's that has been political update you. for today. We'll be back on Friday for a fresh package. Between now and then please play your politics for the greater good and keep it locked on the Nigerian Television Authority, Africa's finest and largest for news reviews, previews and interviews. Bye-bye now.